Hello there. Stefan and Martin here from Schildwach Potsdam and today we talk about Dalagokje's first temple, the first opportune moment to strike your opponent while being safe yourself. And he describes it as after you have parried, there is a temple to strike your opponent and being safe. So I would like to give you a couple of examples because remember a tempo is any motion that you take okay so if Stefan takes a motion I can take a motion right I have to react of course so my motion plus my reaction time needs to be shorter than the time of his attack because if not well if he uh, get the, yeah, let's get even closer from here it's really hard for me to react and get over here so I want to have enough distance. So distance management is important here as well. But if he strikes, I can take a tempo to get an advantageous position in essence, and then take an immediate tempo afterwards to exploit this adva advantageous position, okay? So this would be a strike with a mandrito to my head. I counter strike, I parry with a mezzo mandrito myself and I thrust in Guardia di Faccia, all right? So um, let's do this from this angle as well. So I parry, I even can take a step outside here. This is everything that I do in my first tempo that I take. It's a Dewey tempo action. So first tempo, I get an advantageous position. He's out of position, so it gets really hard for him to parry this follow-up strike. Important. Don't make a pause like I do here to explain it to you, but do everything as the authors would say in one tempo, which is a bit counterintuitive because you are taking two motions, but they mean in one continuous motion, okay? So I want to do this into this, making it much faster because you don't want to give your time to your opponent to react to the new situation, of course. Okay. So we had this strike with Mandrito. Of course, from other positions, this option is available as well. So maybe I'm in a low guard and Stefan goes with the same attack. I can parry in Guardi di Testa. Still one motion, one first parrying motion. And then since I control the opponent's blade, I can in the next tempo, can go for a grapple and strike around. Or maybe even if we're fluently, I can do everything in one fluent motion. It's still too tempy. <laughs> okay, let's do it from this angle once again as well. So I parry and I strike around with a Dritto Tramazzone in that instance. You want control in that first motion and the second motion needs to come right after the first motion. So another option if he strikes a reverso towards my leg, I can parry that with a reverso ridoppio, an ascending strike from my left. From here, I could of course thrust low, but Dalagokia describes as a thrust towards the flank or towards the torso of the opponent. And I also probably want some kind of safety above here when you have a dagger or a cape that could easily fulfill this purpose, but the offhand can do almost the same from here going into here. Or of course, you could even lift your sword out of there and thrust from above from this angle once again. So we are here, I parry and I can thrust below or I parry and I thrust above. Okay, so I think the essence of this Dewey Tempi action should be fairly clear. It's one tempo to parry the opponent's attack, to get them into a disadvantageous position, and then use that advantageous position for yourself. Very closely related are, of course, contra tempo actions, meaning actions that parry and offend in the same motion. And now it's really one tempo. Okay, so if I parry directly in Guardi di Faccia, I'm not, I've not only stopped the opponent's blow towards my face, but I thrust them 
in the same time. And that is, of course, now even harder to thwart for your opponent in this instance, okay? My counterattack finishes in the tempo that Stefan takes for his initial attack. So it's really hard for, to parry. There are, of course, disadvantages to this um, contra tempo action as well, because if I mess it up and he strikes a bit lower, for example, well, then we just get hit both. Of course, Guardi di Faccia covers less lines than a Matsu Mandrito or a Guardi di Testa, which covers a much bigger area on your upper left side. Okay, so you have to set this up um, with care, so you can really predict the opponent's actions for you to use Contra Tempo. And that is what we will discuss in a much later video when we talk about Stringere. All right, for now, we hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and bye-bye.